injury, which is another God thing. Didn't have surgery. I repeated my senior year, had a couple small offers. I grew up five minutes from Wake Forest University. They were like, Wells, we'll, we'll bring you on as a walk-on, right? You know, we're recruiting the best players in the country, guys that captain our U.S. national team since they were in diapers, but we'll give you a spot on the team. <laughs> Um, and when, when I was drafted fifth overall, four years later, they looked at me and they said, we thought you'd never play a day. Last week, we heard Wells's powerful story of how his parents intervened in his life and sent him away to get help, as well as the eventual surprise of his Wake Forest coaches when he got drafted. Hey everyone, this is Reb Brad and you're listening to the From the Touchline podcast. Today, in our final episode of our interview with Wells, he's going to share more about that night and where he feels he might be, if not for God. We also get a little bit lighter. We have a game of crosses with Rev. Wells does great, actually makes a run at the top of the leaderboard. You'll have to listen to see where he lands. So in the next 45 seconds, grab a coffee, get stuck in, and we talk union with God with Wells. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career, the third of the night, the hat-trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner, goes towards the near post, and you're on the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! Wells, go back to that night, and these two figures, these two men, these two people essentially drag you off in the middle of the night. Yeah. You're, you're, I mean, your parents set this up, right? They, they determined this intervention was needed and necessary. Um, well, praise, praise God that my parents had the resources to do that. But also think about how, as a parent, Brad, and all you parents listen, how hard that would be for you. Yeah. I'm like, I've been telling the story, like it's been so hard for me. And I'm like, oh my God, I got kids now. I'm like, I can't imagine doing that, you know? Yeah, it 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 feels tremendously difficult. It reminds me in Galatians 6, it says, Brothers, sisters, if someone's caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them. Well, the word here is gently. It doesn't sound like these two guys are gentle with you. But it, it, it speaks to, I think, sometimes we've got to intercept or intervene in people's lives, maybe our own lives or our children's lives or our family's lives, in a drastic way. And, I mean, what happens, you, you know, I, I don't know, maybe this ages me a little bit. I've seen this film, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, where the, the main character gets a view of his life because he's, he's struggling with it. He gets a view of what would it look like without, without taking this certain path. And, and what for you, Wells, what do you think the path would have been if mom and dad don't essentially lure you home with the promise of your driver's license and, and, and have this drastic intervention? Where, where's Wells Thompson today, do you think? Dead or in jail. Hmm. No doubt about it. Hmm. Isn't it amazing? I um I don't think I've ever shared this with you. My my father was a motorcycle gang member and in Denver. <laughs> He's still got that tattoo on his arms to prove it. The Satan Saints. And I I just think if God had not encountered him in a meaningful way, where would I be today? I and I, 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 I think the same thing. I'd be dead or in jail. Or not even alive, because I just think that God needed to intercept my dad, who who even went he he went to seminary to be a Catholic priest, and like what a weird this isn't the Brad podcast, so I won't I won't get into my story very much, but but in the same way, there are moments when the interventions needed. There's moments when we've. We've got to step up to the plate. And and I hope for anyone listening, you never have to do this with your own children or, or a family member or a loved one, but there are moments when we're called to do hard things. And I just Wells, I'm I'm kind of tearing up here, but I'm I'm thankful for your parents too, that they that they made that tough decision 
and how heartrending that must have been. But maybe it gave them a sense of, we at least know our son is safe and we know where he's at and he's on a road and a pathway to uh, getting help and recovery. Yeah, it's interesting. I think about my parents all the time being a dad now. I got three young boys and I call my dad all the time. I'm like, dad, man, you should have, you should have beat my fanny so much more than you did, man. I love you. Thank you. You know, you're like, you're a great dad. And my dad, it's just so funny about how we operate and work, right? We're oftentimes our own worst enemy. And my dad's thinking on the other side, man, I should have kept my, ten- I should have been more patient. I should, I'm like, no, you shouldn't have, man. <laughs> like if I were raising me, oh my gosh. <laughs> like I, uh, yeah. So I'm it's saying. a tension, right? Like, and, and as parents, both of us now, <laughs> we kind of realize yeah, this isn't easy. Do I do I lean in? Do I press in hard, or do I do I go with the gentle approach? I've got four daughters, so I'm like thinking, man, I got to be more gentle and patient, and I'm not. Uh, God bless parents. We need help, don't we? Yeah. Well, my and and this is my new favorite word, but like dichotomy, mm-hmm. it's like two opposing things that actually work together. I probably didn't explain that well, but. You know what it is, right? Explain it. Yeah, yeah. It? Yeah, a, a, a dichotomy kind of sets up two two different and opposing forces. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. parenting and leadership, and uh, Jocko Willink wrote a book called "The Dichotomy of Leadership." Uh, I think mental health is a dichotomy. Um, a parenting is a dichotomy, and the, what I mean by that is, is like knowing it, it's not like um you can you know for parenting or leadership or running a business or um you know th- there's not 10 rules or laws that you follow in order to do it correctly like in in every situation behave this way right it's a dichotomy you have to figure out like when do you push and when do you sit back right when do you have the tough love and when do you put mm-hmm. the arm around them and show grace and that's the, the the dichotomy of it because uh, we're not in the same situations over and over again, and our kids are growing and we're growing, and it's, our environments are forever changing. Uh, what you do in the situations look very different, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. so like it's really and um, and what I'm figuring is in going back to the retreat. Hopefully, this is making sense to some of you guys. But the retreat I had two weeks ago, the word I walked away with was union. Hmm. The union, and that's a daily walking with God. Hmm. And so I look back on 2022, and I had no union with God. It was wells powered. It was grit my teeth. I'm going to make this work. I've got three young kids. I've got a new business. Man, this is hard as hell, but I can do it, right? Yeah. And now I'm realizing that is just like, man, it's like beating your head against the wall. And 2022 was I'm running, trying to run a mental health company. And I'm crushing my own mental health, Mm. just literally crushing. So I get to end of 2022 and I'm like, again, the substance abuse is coming back up, right? Issues you've had in the past while is still there with you. Um, You know, I go see a therapist and and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Right. And so what I'm realizing now is like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to live in union with God. You Mm. know, this business that God is giving me is not mine. It's not and that's why I saw it as mine in 2022. It's his, right? And I, 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 you know, I grew it. I grew it, and we did some good things. But I don't necessarily. That doesn't equate to stewarding it well. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to steward it well. Yeah. For him. Yeah, and going with God, with others, so key, so important, and. uh yeah, what what will soccer resilience look like with with being in union <clears throat> with God and and with others in in a more healthy holistic way? Um, the story's yet to be told. Twenty twenty three. Uh, we're gonna we'll definitely have to have you back on the podcast before twenty twenty four. You know, but um, what exciting things lay ahead for twenty twenty three? So, well, thanks so much for sharing and and thanks for wow, we got deep there, man. I mean. Yeah. Some tears. I mean, maybe we should start getting away from podcasts and do like video cast or something because lets people see, you know, your name is Sunshine and you've, you and I are both crying here as we should share a little bit of our stories. And um, but so good to have you on the pod today. Wells, uh, before we go, though, 
we did kind of have slated, and you tell me if you're still up for this, I did have slated a little game that we could play called Crosses with Rev. I, but I don't know. Are you up for this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so so the game, just so you know, because I, I think last time we were on, I hadn't developed out this game yet. Um, and I started to learn with podcast guests, like this was a little fun thing to play. It's kind of a little bit on the lighter side. So when I have guests on, um, uh, this game is kind of like the finishing drill at the end of training, right? Where you got a guy on the wing serving it in and a guy's trying to one time it on goal. And so, so I'm going to, I'm going to fire these questions at you and you're just going to try to, you're going to try to answer them as quickly as possible. And there could be some stumpers in here. Okay. Just, I'm just warning you, you could, and, and this is where I see people struggle with the game as they go, oh, oh, what? And then, and then it comes to them. So here's how it goes. 60 second game. I've got a timer right here that I'll start after I ask the first question. And you just want to, you know, snap quick, rapid fire answers. Two types of questions. There's an either or. Those are worth one point. And then there's a fill in the blank or complete the sentence. And so, um, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions like, like here, here's one. And, and this won't be one of the questions, but Man U or Man City. And you just gut instinct, you know, and you could even say neither. You know, that's yeah. an answer, right? That's legit. So I've gone through your story, your history. I know you a little bit. And so I've, I've got hopefully some stumpers in here but you're going to be tested with this a little bit. And um, let me look at the leaderboard right now. Dylan Powers is the only other former player who's played. He leads 18 points, which I feel definitely you can push that, maybe even overtake him on the leaderboard. Um, overall, overall, I think uh, it's a, it's a chaplain, the Portland Timbers chaplain leads the, the entire leaderboard with 25 points. Okay. Um, so I, I think, I don't know, depends on what part of the brain you're in. You ready for this? <laughs> I'm ready, man. Okay. So, so here's a sample though of a sentence question. I might ask my favorite band is peanut butter, peanut butter. I don't know that that's a band, but that's an answer, right? That counts. Um, Do I get points for that? No. Oh, okay. It's got to make no. sense. I've got to start the timer. Yeah, it's got to make sense. Like, and and if you are knowing, <laughs> oh Wells, this this is gonna be funny to play this game with you because you're just so, you're so Wells. All right. Are you? Do you feel ready? Like I've I'm tried ready. to set you up a little bit. I'm okay. I'm, so I'm gonna start the timer as soon as I ask the first question. So here we go. Okay. Left or right footed? Right. My favorite football club is? I'm not a, a UFC is my favorite football club. 100 mile run or 90 minute game? 90 minute game. New England Revolution or Colorado Rapids? Rapids. Thomas or Wells? Wells. Carolinas or Colorado? Carolinas. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Dribble, pass, or shoot? Dribble. My favorite post-game meal is? Spaghetti. U.S. Open Cup or MLS Cup? MLS. El Diablo or Demon Deacon? Demon Deacon. <laughs> Window or aisle? Wind. Aisle. Oh, spirit or river? Oh, my gosh. Both. Soccer savvy or soccer resilience? Soccer resilience. Coffee or tea? Coffee. My favorite comedian is? Oh, dude, Zach Gal oh, Galifianakis. No. Oh, gosh, I don't know his name. Myself. <laughs> oh. Well, you did great. Oh, dude, is that it? Yeah, yeah, time's up, time's up. I 22 points. What? You were a little slow on the questions, man. Uh, everybody says that you've got to allow for, that's why we do 60 seconds here. Oh man. You, uh, there's, 
you changed on window or aisle. Yeah. You and you he, flipped. He, he, so uh, like that was like I said window or aisle, and you're like window. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's the dude that has like kids and he's kind of clean, the white guy, like a little bit bigger. Uh, Gaffigan. Gosh, I always forget his name. That's my favorite comedian. But, uh, but uh, I actually, I might actually say Kevin Hart, dude. He is Hart. Uh, you know who I like now is uh, Bargatsky, Nate Bargatsky. He's kind of from Tennessee. He's funny. Um, you know that guy? Mm hmm. Oh yeah, he's got some funny, funny stuff. Um, yeah, the the other ones I was going to ask you, Adidas or Nike? Adidas or Nike? Yeah. I said Puma. I I remember that about you. You're a Puma guy. Call or text? Call. All right. Twenty-two. Twenty-two points. You're the new leaderboard champion for players. And we'll keep doing this. So I'll I'll change it up next time you're on. That was that was great to have to you know have what they you. Say. What's that? You know what they say. What's that? You ain't first or last. <laughs> uh yeah, I was yeah, did did uh did I stump you with El Diablo or Demon Deacon? Yeah, and then the Spirit River one really threw me for oh, a loop. Man, that was tough. Like, I actually, I had a lame question in here. I was like, Beckham or Zlatan? And I was like, no, that's that's dumb. I was like, Spirit or River, right? Sure. River was your first, right? Your yeah. first golden? Yeah. And then Spirit? Oh, man. I remember. I think we, we watched River, I think, over at our house one time. I that was on a podcast. Yeah, you did, man. Me and my little girls, they, they had in their hearts ever since then that they were going to get a golden retriever, and Brianna, Brianna ended up getting one called Rev, my favorite favorite dog we've ever had. We've had two dogs and Rev, so I got tears in my eyes. My parents had a dog named Rev, and he just died mm. actually, maybe a year ago. Mm. But I was on a podcast yesterday, and then one of the guys said, three people that have most impacted your life, and I said... Parents, brother, Brad Kenny. Man. For real, tell me. Thank you. Love yeah. being on the podcast. Let's do it again soon. Let's do it again soon. Hey, Wells, just to close out, let's uh let's pray a quick blessing. I'm gonna pray a blessing over you, your work with soccer resilience and over parents and players, children everywhere. So God, thank you for this time. Thank you for Wells sharing his story with us. And and Lord, as parents, we it is a struggle. Uh, mm -hmm. And we need we need you. We need you. And and we need other supportive elements like soccer resilience and other um, good people in our lives and around us. So, Lord, for the places where we fail as parents in the places where we fail as coaches or chaplains or athletes, uh, would you just bring those people into our lives that affect and change and move move us to places where we can get uh, the help, the encouragement, the support that we need. And I just pray a blessing on wells, on soccer resilience, and on uh, this upcoming year. May it be one in which we walk in union with you, God, and we'll give you the praise and glory. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, this has been Rev Brad and Wells Thompson coming to you from the touchline. Do you have union with God as Wells described? Are you walking with him? It makes a difference, you know, as athlete, coach, even a fan of football, soccer, we all go through highs and lows on and off the pitch. But truly, only when we're walking in step with God can we have the support and love that we need in this life. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope you're enjoying hearing from some of those who are part of the beautiful game. Next week, we have another special guest, Jared Watts. We're going to break Jared's interview into another multi-part series that will take place over the next few weeks. If you like what you're hearing, give us a star rating and a review wherever you fancy listening to podcasts. Thanks again. This is Red Brad coming to you from the Touchline. <laughs>